very honored to be here, standing before you, uh, to talk about revenge. Now, but it's a funny topic because I think that you should probably clap the loudest for the group of people that are about to get up here tonight. Can you why? Because they're vengeful people. <laughs> really. So, uh, speaking of the heat, it's uh, Arizona. I'm going to Arizona in a couple weeks. I'm going because I have a travel business site. That's where my, my nation is. I'm a, uh, a citizen of, of the Gila River Indian community of Arizona, uh, which is basically all the area south of Metro Phoenix. Um, and I know every time I go, it, I, I rent a car, I drive down to I-10 towards Tucson, about 30 miles out is the town of Sacaton. And Sacaton uh, is our tribal headquarters. But as I'm headed out there, I pass this bridge. And uh, you know, there's a little sign, it's a sun bleach sign on the side of the road, and it announces that I'm crossing the great Gila River, the river for which we are named, the Gila River Indian community. Um, in our language, we're the Akhtan people, or the people, um, Akimo Akhtan to be specific, the river people. Now, I always look off into the distance to see that river, and I never have. It's Arizona. It's a dry riverbed, cracked, um, dust devils in the distance, tumbleweeds. Um, but it, all, it, it wasn't always that way. About 100 years ago, uh, the government uh, decided they wanted more people uh, to farm, more settlers in the Arizona territory. So they invited people to come. We we'll give you 640 acres, turn it into a farm. But in order to turn it into a farm, they had to take the water from somewhere. And this is all upstream. So they diverted all that water and built their dams. Indians be damned. Uh, so our river dried up, our, our lands dried up, our agriculture dried up, our economy dried up. And we're descendants of the great Hubukam people, uh, the canal builders. Uh, a thousand years ago, they built these huge canals which were like 10 feet deep and 30 feet wide, and they channeled the water of the Gila River and the Salt River, and they created amazing uh, network infrastructure of canals, and, and they were able to you know, irrigate their lands and grow crops, all their, their traditional foods, squash, bean, corn, uh, pumpkins, melons, and even uh, Pima cotton, probably in some of your shirts. But let me come back a little bit here. Um, before I was a filmmaker or a, an actor, um, I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. After my first year of law school, uh, first year of law school, I went to work for my tribe as an uh, intern for their, in their legal office. And uh, the head of the, the head attorney loved to golf, and so he would close up shop um, every Friday afternoon. Not well, not every Friday afternoon, but. It seemed like every Friday afternoon. And we'd go golfing, because our community is fortunate enough to have two professional golf courses attached to one, our resort. And this, this golf course, it's, it's a veritable oasis in the desert. And it's uh, just, you know, desert, 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 lush green grass, manicured lawns, rolling hills, a, a waterway meandering through you know, lakes and waterfalls. And that water has brought forth vegetation and, and cottonwoods and willows and, and, and it's brought all the animals. It's brought tons of birds and waterfowl. It's basically transformed that area. And it's pretty amazing. And the reason why they did this, it's, it's planned this way, because they wanted to simulate, simulate what the Gila River would have looked like back then, or what it should look like now. So, um, over the history, of course, we all know the hardships. I kind of described some in, 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 the, in the future. But I wasn't born in that era. I was born in the 70s, you know. This is a time when there was the self-determination era, they call it, when the, the federal government decided, well, maybe the natives, the Indians, you know, might know how to take care of their own people better than us. 
So they decided to give them a little more power, and we took that power. It's, well, it's really, we've always had it, it's called our sovereignty. We're sovereign people, and, and we, we have always been. Um, so, um, uh, with, the, with, the, with the self determination era, that's when casinos came about. Uh, some uh, tribes did very well, not all tribes, only a handful of tribes actually operate casinos, and only some of those are successful, the ones you hear about in the news. Um, but I'm fortunate to be part of uh, a successful tribe. And I'm very proud of that. Um, but that has allowed us to litigate, to have lawyers, to have that law office. And that guy I told you who closed shop every Friday, he's one of the veteran lawyers, uh, one of the original activists, sort of like Billy Frank Jr. in this area for the Squally people and the fishing rights. Um, but he was a warrior for water, which is a precious commodity, especially in the Southwest. And just a little plug, if we need the water. Water's life. We need clean water. We need a clean Puget Sound. We need uh, clean water in, in North Dakota. You hear about the pipeline. And of course, there's fracking, but no ranting, right? No ranting. Uh, so what I'm getting at um, is is that uh, I received an article uh, via social media about something my tribe has done. And it's tied to a settlement of, uh, for our water. And in 2004, we reached a settlement with this litigation that has gone on for 54 years, something like that. Finally, we reached a settlement that my tribe is going to get uh, 650,000 acre feet of water, which is a lot of water. Um, so it's kind of full, it's coming full circle. Um, and that water, we're, we own it, and we can lease it. But we're going to use it. Our priority is we're going to go to, uh, it's going to go back to uh, infrastructure. It's going to go back to our agriculture. It's going to return us back to the way we were you know, in the past. Um, but the amount that we don't use, we actually can lease it to our nearby cities, to the cities that have just grown and grown and grown without any regard to the environment. And now, uh, I, I heard in this newspaper article that uh, we are selling a portion of our water rights for $43 million. And that 